Okay, good morning calculus students. So today I would like to show you how to use the TID4 to make functions, uh, graphing, the calc uh, graphing the functions with the TID4 and also finding the derivative and also finding the comparing the second derivative. So here's the TID4. So the first thing that we want to do, we want to put in the function. So you want to hit y equal and then it shows you that y1, y2, y3. So you want to put in a cubic trinomial so the function we're going to enter is x to the power of 3 minus 2x and plus 3 and now in order to enter the derivative so we want to put in math and then if we scroll it down so you'll see that number a right there it's called n deriv so we're using that 8 so as you can see that's called d over d blank so we put in d over dx so that means we're taking the derivative with respect to x and the functions instead of re-entering the function we put in vars y vars and then function and then y1 and then for the x component we just want to put in x equals x So now let's just compare those two graphs, the original functions, and then the first derivative. So now we hit graph. So you probably have to wait for a little while. So the calculator is loading. You see the little circle, the circulating yellow circle here. So this one is loading. So the blue curve, so that's the original functions. And then the red curve, and that's the first derivative. If someone can tell me things that's happening over here on the functions. So as you can see that the derivative for the original function, if that's considered increasing, so that means the derivative is always considered positive. So from negative infinity to a certain position over here, so the graph is considered increasing, so that means the first derivative, it's always positive. And also over here, if the graph is considered decreasing, the original function is decreasing, so that means the derivative would be considered negative. So everything down here, it's below the x-axis. Again, the original function is increasing, so that means the slope is considered positive. So that's why it's above the x-axis. And also, according to that, the theorem is showing that the max and the min. So one thing that we notice about the max and the min, so anytime that we deal with the rate of change at the max and the min, the instantaneous rate of change is always considered zero. So the max right here, so it hits zero. And then over here, it's also zero. So if the derivative shows that from positive to negative, so that means it shows that the original function, it's a max. If the derivative shows the sign change from negative to positive, so it shows that it's a relative minimum. And now we're going to find out that the second derivative in just a minute. So go back to y equal and then you want to go to y3 and now this time you just want to put in the exact same process so you want to go to math and then 8 again so it's d over dx and then for y vars this time we want to put in y2 because we're taking the second derivative so again once you hit vars and then you find y vars functions and then y2 so again, we just put in any random number. So this one, let's just put in x. And again, hit graph. So this one is going to be taking for a little while because that the calculator is making sure that we're making the second derivative. So it takes time to think. And here's the one. It's just a straight line. So one thing for sure that what we have here, if the original function is concave down, so that means the second derivative is considered negative. So that's why this part of the line right here, it's all underneath the x-axis. Because that 
the original function is facing downward it's about the concavity and also this point right here is called the point of inflection if that's a point of inflection that means the second derivative is showing that it's a zero and then everything else over here from zero to infinity so the original function is considered concave up and that's why the second derivative is positive another thing this one is related with geometry so let's say that the original function is considered the volume of an object which is to the third power the reason why to the third power because that for example the volume of a rectangular prism is always length times width times the height so that's why I call it either like cubic feet or cubic meter or cubic centimeter and then for the quadratic which is the derivative and that would be considered the x to the power of 2 so x to the power of 2 that would be considered the surface area of the object and then the second derivative guess what that is if that's linear that's correct which is the perimeter the perimeter of the object with two-dimensional surface And I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video today. Thank you.